Hey friends, my name is Connor and I'm a final year medical student studying at King's College London. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the UCAT exam. So that's going to include what the UCAT exam is, who has to sit the exam, and how I would suggest you can start preparing right now to get the best possible grade on your UCAT. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's going to be tons of UCAT videos coming out in the next few weeks to help you prepare all for free to get the best grade on your UCAT exam. So what is the UCAT exam? The UCAT exam is one of three of the main entrance exams for medicine in the UK. If you're an undergraduate student, so you haven't done a degree before, you're going to be sitting the UCAT and or another exam called the BMAT. Now I'm not an expert in the BMAT, so I'm going to leave some links below to some brilliant videos is about the BMAT. I did do really well on my UCAT though, so I feel like I am in a position to try and provide a bit of advice on how everyone can prepare and do better. The UCAT has five sections. Four of those sections are given a numerical score and one of them is given a band from one to four. So the four marked numerical sections are verbal reasoning, which is going to be language, it's going to be written communication and comprehension. Quantitative reasoning, which is some simple maths questions normally based on a graph or some data in a chart. Decision making, which is a bit of a weird one. Decision making is kind of logical thinking and deduction. And then abstract reasoning, which is pattern recognition. That fifth section, which is given a band, that's called the situational judgment test. And the situational judgment test is part ethics exam, part logical thinking about what you might do in different scenarios. Now the UCAT is probably the most important of the two entrance exams that you could sit as an undergrad student because it's got the most universities that accept it. Now, there's too many for me to list, so I'm just gonna put them up on the screen now, and you can have a look now and see if any of these are ones you're thinking of applying to. Different universities use the UCAT in different ways, so some might just set a cutoff and say, everyone above this grade will be considered for an interview, whereas some universities might rank people based on their UCAT score. So they might say that those people with the top UCAT scores are gonna be the first in line to get interviews. Probably the most common question that I've heard anyone ask about the UCAT is how long do you need to prepare for? Now, if you look online, the general recommendation is to give yourself at least six weeks of preparation time. And I think that's probably a good number to aim for. I would try and have at least six weeks. I think you wanna be able to spend a significant amount of time getting used to the question style, because unless you're someone who's done something like the 11 plus when you were younger, or you're someone who regularly has to do IQ tests for some reason, you've probably never seen these types of questions. I know that when I was in sixth form and had a look at the UCAT, I had never seen most of these questions before, and so I had to spend a long time getting used to the question style. You also need to really work on your timings, because the UCAT is a two hour long, computer exam and there's not much time to answer each of the questions and that means that the speed at which you can answer these questions is almost as important as getting them right. However long you have, whether it's six weeks or more before your UCAT exam, I'm going to give you a brief framework on how I think you should structure your preparation. Have a look at how long you have, let's take six weeks just as an example, and I think you need to spend the first half of that time getting used to the questions. Expose yourself to every single possible question style and do as many as you can. And at this point, what you're trying to focus on is one, working out what each different question is asking you so that you can answer. And then two, it's your accuracy. So you wanna spend the first half of the time trying to get as many questions right as possible. Now, that's not to say that in the second half of your time, you don't wanna get questions right, but the more important thing for that second half is speed. The most important thing overall is volume. And I can't stress this enough, People who do best on the UCAT exam are doing best because they've exposed themselves to the biggest volume of questions. There is an absolute ton of free questions you can access online. I'm gonna put some links down below to some free resources. There are also some paid resources which are quite good and generally they range from about 50 pounds to 100 pounds for a year's access to as many questions as you could possibly use. If you're on a budget, I would really recommend you buying secondhand UCAT practice books. So because these are physical books, people can resell them and there'll be a lot of people every year selling off their used books after they've passed the UCAT. If you're interested in hearing more about the strategies that I use to score in the top 1% of anyone that's at the UCAT, check out this video and I break down all of the techniques I use. You can also watch any of the videos on screen right now to learn more about the individual sections of the UCAT exam. To everyone watching, good luck. Remember to subscribe and like the video. Let me know below if there's anything else you want to hear about the UCAT exam.